then I can say it's on YouTube, right? Best way to do it is to take, may I, may I borrow um, this? The best way to do it to organize yourself is to take a few pages and say, okay, this part of my journal is going to be my notes, right? Now, at the beginning here, you're going to write homeworks. Then you take a few more pages and you say, this part is my homeworks. Then right here, chakras, because this is the book. Chakra book notes. Then you take a few more pages and you do that. Okay? And then the last part, you do vocabulary. Right? And then that's what that's how you divide up your journal. Okay? That, that, that makes it easier for you and it's much more efficient for you when you need to study. Because you won't need to study all of the um, homeworks, right? So there's no reason to keep them right next to each other. And it just makes it easier for me to grade as well. Okay? Make sense? No homework tracker Uh-huh. And now we start as of today. Yes, you can start as of today. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about the four paths of yoga. On Monday, we talked about the eight steps of yoga. And I hope you remember that we have those, and I hope that you go back to the YouTube channel and listen. And remember, it's in 10-minute increments, so you can listen 10 minutes here, later on throughout the day, 10 minutes there. Re-listen to it. I'll tell you why. How many times does it take the brain to actually study something, intake something, before it actually gets ingrained? You guys know? Mm -hmm. Positive psychology, times, how many times? Eight. No, I don't know. 11 times. Mm -hmm. When you're studying for your math test, you need to do that problem 11 times to make sure you know how to do it. When you're studying for your algebra, uh, when, when you're studying for your philosophy test, you need to read the, the, the book 11 times before it actually becomes completely ingrained in you. Right? So 11 times. So that's why you have to hear things 11 times. 11 is that magical number. Okay? Is that All right. right. How much did 11 times to pick up the rhythm? See, more. Than <laughs> <laughs> but you're not, but see, if you, as long as you tell them, oh, that's another conversation for a different part of the yoga philosophy. As long as you tell somebody to do something, how many of you do what you're told? That creates a resistance, an internal resistance. Yoga will tell us. You don't, you don't tell somebody. You learn to coach them so that they come to their own answers. And when they come to their own answers, they gladly do the things without you telling them. Right? That's another part of yoga. Right? That's the bhakti. Excuse me. That's the um, the intellect, jnana yoga. Okay. So the four paths of yoga. There are four ways that you can live your life, and some people want to live their life just one way, and some people, as you will see, that in this class, I'm gonna ask you to do almost everything because I cover everything. So the first path is karma yoga. That's the active path. That's the path of action, where you do selfless service, volunteering, Right? Volunteering to help your mom with the dishes. Volunteering to walk a lady across the street. Volunteering at a walkathon. Volunteering at a local neighborhood something or other. Right? Selfless service where you give up yourself expecting absolutely nothing in return. Very different than when you do something and you expect it in return. Now, we have to be very careful because yoga will tell us that when you do something, expecting something in return, you basically annihilate the deed. Okay? Let me give you an example. How many times, and, and as children, we learn to manipulate. That's called manipulation. When you expect something in return, that's called manipulation. We are so gladly and, and well manipulated by our children, right? I promise, mommy, I'll do this. 
this or, oh, mommy, it looks so pretty today. Mommy, let me get that for you. And what they really want is something in return, right? So we have to be careful that we check our motives. That's, you know, in order to be truly karma yoga, you must check your motive. Why are you doing that? Why are you giving a compliment? Because if you're expecting something in return, you annihilate. Right? Even if it means that you just want to be recognized, you still annihilate it, right? I had an ex-student of mine who was always um, cooking dinner, and all she really wanted was her mom and dad to say, thank you so much. So when we got down to it, I said, you know, why are you doing it? She says, recognition from my parents. I said, then don't do it. Stop doing it. Because if that's the only reason you're doing it, you're annihilating it. Right? So we have to be careful that we don't do that. Okay? The second path of yoga that you can choose is Janata Yoga, which is the philosophical path, as it says there. That's through our philosophy, which is what I'm giving you right now, and through our intellect. The philosophy gets ingrained into our intellect and we, then we can take action, right? We can take action based on the universal laws. So that's kind of um, where we move in that philosophy, right? Philosophy that you're going to get starting next week with um, all of the uh, yamas and the niyamas, okay? Path number three, bhakti yoga, the devotional path, which we will also practice here, which is chanting, mantra, and prayer. Okay? How many of you guys already pray at home? Right. So those of you that pray at home, everybody prays. How many times have you said, oh, God, help me? Mm -hmm. Right? That's a prayer. That's a prayer. So everybody prays. You don't realize you're praying, but you're praying, right? Okay, so what we're going to actually be doing in this class is learning a mantra and chanting it, okay? Because we're actually going to practice um, bhakti yoga, right? And there is a, for the mantras, mantras are seed sounds. They're seed sounds that reverberate in our body and they change the structure of our cells okay i found this awesome um this awesome um video and i'm trying to figure out how to i think i'm going to share it on the angel health side of facebook but i want you guys to watch it because it's a seed sound which we say all the time here in yoga which is om which we say is the sound of God, right? We're not saying it is God, we're saying it's the sound. If there were a sound to the word label um, of God, that would be the sound, Om. And when these people are chanting it, you should see the cells in this Petri dish move in beautiful, beautiful, um, they look like um, snowflake type um, images right they they move in the patterns like that so i'm going to send that to you but i'm actually going to post it up on the angel health um, website if you haven't liked the site you need to like it because you're going to be posting up things i'm going to ask you to post up things so make sure you like that site okay the fourth path of yoga is raja yoga which is the scientific path the scientific path goes back to the eight steps that we learned on Monday. You remember the eight steps we learned on Monday? So that scientific path is those eight steps. If you were absent on Monday, what you need to do is go back to the YouTube, get the notes, listen to the lecture, right? And I sent you the link, so you guys just go to that link, okay? I believe, I might be wrong, but I believe if you subscribe and, and you turn on notifications, every time I post something, which will be this afternoon, you will get a notification that there 